Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Come and join us. As you can see, normally I'm not really sitting down. I'm always standing up or in a different location. Usually I stand over there. I decided to sit down today. I just feel like I uh, don't really want this to be a sermon, even though it will be, but to be more personal. Uh, It's been a while since I've posted a sermon. Um, Life just... But, you know... You can check out the old sermons that we've done. God is timeless. Uh, He's not bound by time. So his word is never changes. So you can look at old sermons or any sermon that is biblical and you're going to get the you're going to get fed. So with that being said, let's get right to it. I don't have a specific thing to talk about, but I do want to allow the Holy Spirit to use me and speak to um, you uh, wherever you're at and whatever you're going through. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. Forgive us of our sins. Fill us up with the measure of your love. Empty us. Help us follow your will and be obedient. And help us forgive our enemies and help our enemies forgive us. Father, we pray for our enemies. We pray for the enemies of whoever's watching this or listening. And we pray for the person who is watching this, that they may hear from you, not from me, and that you will use anything to get glory out of it because you're just that good and that amazing. We worship you. We honor you with our entire life. Thank you for loving us when we do not deserve it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Every sermon always feels like my first sermon. (laughs) So there's a sense of excitement, but there's also this sense of fear, and there's also this sense of the unknown. And then there's also just things that just happen. However that, whatever that is, good or bad. Hmm. I guess I'll talk about kind of my personal testimony. I've talked about my testimony a lot, but it's been a while. Maybe we should talk about it every once in a while to remind ourselves, right? A lot of things in the Bible, God does to remind us of his love, to remind us of his promises when he flooded the earth and with Noah. And then after the flood, there was a big rainbow. It says, covenant promise that he is with us that his promises and his word are true and maybe we need to remind ourselves of those promises of those miracles of those healings of of the time we got saved or maybe you're watching this and you're not saved and you're like i want to experience god now how do i know your god is the true god well god gives us his word But we're saved. We have to come into faith like a child every day. Some people think it's, oh, you Christians. But we have to become Christians every day. That's how I feel. I have to get baptized every day. Not literally, but in my mind, heart, and spirit, in my faith. I need new faith every day. I need new forgiveness of sins every day. I need new wisdom and knowledge every day. Because the knowledge of the past isn't going to help me get through the obstacles I got to go through in the future. You know, and it's always unknown. So we look to our our leaders or the people we look up to that have came before us in the Bible and in the people in the church that have come before us. And I've, I'm so admirable of all of you who are older than me and you are still kept the faith. I am. I, I give a round of applause to you because 
literally every other day or or every day sometimes it feels like I'm like why do I why should I even keep going it's not worth it but that's the thing about God is we serve an amazing faithful God and I think about that word faithful promises he keeps his promises from Abraham to the to revelation or to the end of time he will keep his promises and so if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior God is promising you that he is not giving up on you even when you give up on him or others or whatever he keeps his promises and he brought this interesting moment up to me when I was in church and long story short I had issues with uh, several people and particularly one and they really hurt hurt me they really did and it just it just I couldn't forgive them and forgiveness isn't like that like there's a measure of forgiveness based on the offense or the sin um, and that's either on our part or others parts with that being said what do I mean it's it's if you lie it's kind of depending on the lie for instance it's you can forgive someone a lot quicker but let's just say that this person did something horrendous to you you already know what it is it takes time to forgive that person I wish forgiving people was just like pressing a button like boop I forgave you already I just push this magic button and I forgive you but you can't really learn from your mistakes and people can't learn from their mistakes so it takes me a, it takes me a while I thought I forgave this person I, I cried and everything several months or weeks or whatever even years probably I'm still why haven't I been able to shake this off it's it's still coming back I still feels like this person hurt me all over the, uh, again now I don't know exactly why and every reason maybe every little sin they did or you did or whatever needs to be forgiven but i do know this this forgiveness is a gift from god but it's also a gift to one another to forgive someone is a gift to them and to and to you and depending on what happened between you and the person forgiveness isn't just overnight it's not just you press this magical button i forgave you don't you wish it could be that easy only if right but then we really don't learn anything and we really don't appreciate the forgiveness just like appreciating a gift you would appreciate um someone drawing you or spending a lot of time on making you this amazing gift versus just someone who just bought it in the store it's store bought gift it's not really a gift it's a gift in some ways but it's not as valuable and as far as God's word it's valuable because when you look at it it's just a book at first but when you live by it and you see and you apply it and you experience God for yourself he stops becoming this microwaved generation where you just instantaneous you want forgiveness you want this you want that and he becomes this long process of this relationship of this forgiveness of this grace of his love and you realize the value in that i mean your tv can't love you because it doesn't have free will and neither can people love each other without free will loving someone doing something good for someone is a choice and they can choose to obey you or not to they could choose to be faithful to you or not to and when they choose to do the good things that the bible tells us to do it's an act of love when they choose to pray for you they don't have to they could do anything else they could pray for anyone else so when we remember god's promises god is nothing but good he can't be evil in any way so when we are experiencing tragedy it has nothing to do with the god that we serve that is not something that god did that's something of Satan, that's something that we did, that's something of the demons, whatever. That's not God's fault. But God is so good, he wants to rescue us. He wants to fix the situation. And sometimes he fixes it very quickly. And other times it takes time um, for him 
to do something, not on that he's limited, but he wants us to learn something from it. He wants us to get something from it. He wants us to value our relationships, value the process of forgiveness, value these things. So God is doing a work from Abraham's day, fulfilling the promises that he promised to Abraham through our generation, to anyone who believes. And with that being said, your life, you're probably wondering why it's not moving or why things aren't happening. I've prayed a thousand times and this and this and that. We serve a very patient God. And he says, I'm going to fulfill those things, not in a blink of an eye, but over the course of time. Gradually. I mean, the best analogy I can come up with quickly to the point would be when you put seed into a ground today and tomorrow, you don't wake up and go, where's the tree? Where's the uh, fruit? No, it takes time. And depending on the seed is depending on how much time it's going to take. So with it on all that being said, um, this relationship with God that seems to be so long and drawn out, almost like it's not happening. I promise you, it's happening. But it's not happening to our time. It's happening according to his time. Maybe God promised you something and you're just growing impatient. And I'd advise you, him saying, we're gonna get there When you stop anticipating what it should look like, how it should be, and you start to live the life that I have set before you, you focus on your part, I'll focus on my part. What is our part? The Bible is very clear about our part, about the things that Jesus, God, expects of us. And if we don't know, we can always ask. We can look at the Bible or we can ask. What is your will for my life? What do you want me to do today? God is very loving, very patient, and nothing but good and holy. And he says, I'm going to fulfill all my promises that I've promised Abraham to you and to your future generation. All you have to do is trust that promise. Now, it's hard trusting when this world is untrustworthy. We're experiencing untrustworthy people. Un we can't trust ourselves. We can't trust others, so on and so forth. All the time, 24 seven, seven days a week, I get it. But that's not the God that we serve. That's not the only true God. All the other gods will lie to you, but this, because they're not gods, but this God is the only true God, and he said, I will fulfill everything I've promised Abraham. And those who've experienced that and those who don't are the difference in the ones who who believe it. Just like the ones who believe in the forgiveness of sins. If you believe it, you you receive it. You receive what the word says and what you believe. You can read any other false teachings or false religions or false gods it'll never come to pass the Lord says my word always comes to pass to those who believe so the problem is how do we get to ourselves to a place of believing believing that the Lord is with us believing that God takes care of us will shepherd us believing these things God never intends for us to be in a circumstance that is unfruitful for our life. A place that we can't grow. He's always trying to stretch us beyond what we thought was possible. Because with man, anyone, it's impossible. But with God, with him, all things are possible. Every day, he's stretching me beyond what I thought 
was possible. Every day he's pushing me. I didn't know I had that much strength. I don't, not in myself. I didn't know I was that smart. I'm not, not in myself. I didn't know I could do that. I can't, not within myself. The father is an encourager. One of his attributes. He will push you and he is pushing you and pushing you and pulling you. I don't wanna say he's dragging you, but he is guiding you to reach beyond what you thought was possible, to reach beyond what science, to reach beyond logic, to reach beyond what humans think are possible, impossible. He's reaching, he's pushing us further. And he's saying, by yourself, yes. But with me, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible. So within all that being said, God is always trying to show us a different part of himself. He's always trying to help us, guide us, lead us. He's always picking us up. So wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, God is saying, trust me. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I am Lord, I am God. I got this all under control. I know what's happening in the world. I know the, these rulers that are doing this and that. I know what people who are coming against you. I know what your own thoughts are saying. I know, I know. The question is, do you trust me? That's the question. How, how do I trust you, Lord? How? I've already provided a word. Get into it. Get into it. Memorize it. Memorize the word. So when the enemy comes, that word is on fire and ignites and it rejects anything that is doubt, anything that is anxiety, anything that is fearful, anything that causes you to stumble, anything that's prideful, anything that is not of me. When you hold my word, you know it from like the knowing the back of your hand you will know the truth. And that truth will set you free from all of those things that tell you that you're not good enough, that tell you that you're not loved, that tell you you'll never succumb to anything. My word is eternal. Those doubts and fears are temporary. They come and go like the wind. Place your life on my word, on my son, who is my word, Jesus. And I will show you that all things are possible. Read it and apply it to your life, not that it saves you. You will only receive it by faith. Faith, believe, believe. The hardest thing for us to do is to believe, to believe that there's God only one who created the heavens and the earth, the things that we see and don't see. To believe that he loves us and he's with us always and he's forgiven our sins. And to believe that his promises last eternally from this day forward, from the beginning of creation to the end of creation, from forever and ever. Believe in all that God has for you. That is the only way to please the Lord. That is the only way to woo him. He believes. He, she sees me. When the world does not see me, my children see me. Because my children believe in me. They believe in my son. 
They believe in the Father. And they believe in the Holy Spirit. That is the only way to experience the Lord. That is the only way to see him. That is the only way to know that everything's okay. That is the only way. Believe, even when it doesn't make sense. Believe, even when you can't see. Believe, even when you don't understand. I trust you because you said it. I trust you because I've experienced it. Remind yourself what you've experienced already. You're wondering why you can't see much change in your life. Simply because of believing. We have to remind our flesh to believe. As David says, why are you so faint hearted, my soul? Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Believe in the Holy Spirit. David said to himself, he saw the Spirit witnessing the Father exalting the Son to his right hand. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand while I make your enemies my footstool. God is one. The Lord God said to the Lord God, experiencing in the Spirit the Lord it is the only way. God loves you. He loves you. He cares about you so much. He wants you. He desires you. There's only one God. From Genesis to Revelation, there's no more books of the Bible. That's all there is. It's a closed set. It's finished. Jesus says, when he died on that cross for all of humanity's sins. The world that we experience is not the world that God intended for it to be like. But he will redeem it because he's just that good. He doesn't have to. We don't deserve it. Neither can we earn it or fix it ourselves. He says, I would do it because of my promises to Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. I've made my promises to your forefathers and I will fulfill every single one of them. You watch and wait and you will believe. I'm not telling you to believe. I will prove to you why you should believe. That is the God I serve and that is the God you serve. And if you don't know this God and you're watching this video, Everything in your life, every moment, every thought, everything from the smallest grain of grass to an atom or a neutron or the smallest particle in the universe has a purpose. And if that has a purpose, you have a purpose. The God that created that, he created time and dimension. He created the realities he created the heavens and the earth in a 24-hour day period within six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. Not that he was tired, but he looked at all that he created. And he says, every single thing in creation has a purpose. And it will never experience true life unless it experiences me. We have no purpose unless we know who the Lord is. Do you want to know the Lord? Do you want to know him more? Maybe you have doubts. Maybe you have sin that's blocking you from believing. Sin distorts the images of people. It distorts the images about who we are as individuals. It distorts the images of creation. It destroys everything. It distorts the image of God. There are many idols in this world. Anything can be worshipped. People worship anything these days. They always have, actually. They're like sheep. They go astray. You can't keep sheep close to you within three feet away. If they stray further than that, they will walk away and wander off a cliff and follow 
the rest of the flock off that cliff. That is humanity. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know who they are. They're all faking it till they make it. And they're going to fake it right off a ditch. How can you lead when you're blind? How or why would you follow someone who's blind and does not know what they're going or what they're doing? But the Lord says, I know where I'm going and I know what I'm doing. Jesus says that. Are you tired? Are you exhausted? Are you ready to surrender? Every day is a surrendering day. Every moment is a surrendering moment. Surrender to the Lord. Every day, I surrender. Every day, what is your will? I trust you even though I don't see, even though I don't know where I'm going, what I'm doing. I trust you, Father, because you love me. And I believe that I'll follow you into the darkness. I'll follow you up the mountain. I will go where you go, where you stay, I will stay. Do you trust Jesus enough to give everything to him? Every grand, amazing thing you've ever experienced outside of sin, that comes from the Lord. And he's saying, you're only experiencing as much as you trust me. I created you. I know who you are. I know how I designed you. I know how to get the best out of you. You did not create yourself. I created you. And I knew you before all things were even created. And I've called you my own. Believe it. And walk in that security. Everything's okay. Stop getting distracted. Keep your eyes on the word. Keep your faith on Jesus. And hold tight to the Father. He says, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I will deliver you. Not because you deserve it. Not because you can earn it. Not because of anything that you can offer me. He's because I'm faithful. Because I'm loving. I have justice. I have mercy. You aren't saved because of your own faith. I am the one who gives you your faith. I fashioned you together and I put that faith in you to believe. You can boast in nothing. You can't boast in your wisdom. You can't boast in your faith. You cannot boast in anything. Boast. All boasting belongs to the Lord. We boast in many things in this world and we create those things and make them idols. My faith is greater than anyone's. But I tell you, it is not your faith. It is the Lord because he created you. So believe. How do I believe if I don't even have the capabilities to believe? You have to know that you don't have the capabilities for anything. That's how you believe. You believe when you surrender all of your capabilities as if they were yours to begin with. They're not. They're not mine. They're not yours. They're not anyone's. They're the Lord's. Everything is the Lord's. So when we look at around the world and we see the things happening in this world, all the bad is from us and Satan and his rebel demons but all the good moving in the midst of all that is the Lord. And he has and will never give up on us. He will never give up on you, me or anyone. Believe, believe, believe that I am incapable of believing. Lord, I need your faith. I need you to open my eyes. I need you to help me believe. Help me hear. Help me understand. Help me see. Lord, I can do nothing without you. He says, 
That's faith. That's surrenderance. And only those who offer me everything will experience me, see me, hear me, and know me, and more. God loves you so much. He wants you so much to surrender. Surrender your life. And he says, then you will have me. Then you will know me. Surrender your faith, surrender your wisdom, surrender everything. Then you will truly be set free from yourself and from others. And this world that's fading away and dying in its rebellion and its vanity of self. I trust you. Jesus said, I trust you. Even when they nail my hand to a cross, my feet, and spear my side, and lash my body, I trust you. Do you love God or Jesus, or will you love him enough to do that? The greatest witness is those who've died for their faith in Christ, in God, Son, Father and Spirit, I trust you. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. God bless.